Things have really started to heat up in the world of ARM chips. As we've discovered, with Apple being a prime example, they're really good in laptops. They make things run faster, and they allow the laptops to last a heck of a lot longer. So far, Apple's dominated this space, but the newcomer, Qualcomm X Elite, which is on the verge of being released, and we've got some benchmarks here. In a recent video, I covered the history of how this chip came about. I'll link to that video down below. All perfectly legal, if not questionable, but it comes from a good place. Now, these are early benchmarks, so to be taken with a grain of salt. But if you compare them directly to Apple, they're actually skipping the generation that M1 was, and they're beating the M2, and they're going for the M3 right off the bat. This is their first generation. Let's have a look. Oh, and this video is not sponsored. I just like this stuff. I'm fascinated by it, and I'm looking forward to the competition because I use this stuff. Snapdragon X Elite, and there's a couple of results here, all from a mysterious machine called the ZHWXX, which is probably a reference machine by Qualcomm, but these scores are actually quite nice. I'm gonna remind you what the current status of Apple Silicon machines is, and we'll also compare this to what's going on with AMD and Intel. This is the single core and multi-core score for the M2 chip, second generation, and here it is next to the best Snapdragon X Elite result. We are pretty much neck and neck for that single core operation. Now the X Elite does have 12 performance cores, which is a lot more than the eight cores on the M2 chip. At 12 minus uh, eight, to carry that five and uh, four more than the M2 chip. That's why we see a much higher multi-core score here. And for those of you that need a refresher why I'm comparing these is because this is an ARM architecture, ARM-based architecture. I'll get back to the AMDs and the Intels. Those are not ARM architecture. That's why I'm doing this first. ARM, in my opinion, is the future of where personal computing is going. And it's also going to save a ton of money to the Amazons and Microsofts of the world that are providing cloud infrastructure. If they move to ARM, they have a lot to gain. Whether they'll pass on those savings on to us i doubt it <laughs> sorry um yeah i don't think they will but they will save a lot of money and maybe that'll translate to some more r d to give us better stuff who knows the catch is that these chips the new qualcomm chips are not available in machines until later this year at which point they'll be placed into laptops uh, for us to buy and then we'll be able to install a linux for arm or windows for arm on those machines and use those operating systems not the x86 versions which presents a whole new set of challenges as well because windows for arm is a little bit behind, but they're catching up. For example, if you're doing software development, like I do, Visual Studio, uh, one of the top, if not the top tool you use on Windows for software development, works very well on Windows for ARM. It works flawlessly. I've tested this. I have videos about this on the channel as well. What about this multi-core score? Well, to get to multi-core equivalents, we'll need the same number of cores. And to get 12 cores in an M2 class machine, you'll need to go to the M2 Pro. And here the multi-core score is actually beating out the Qualcomm chip. So that was ARM. How does this compare to raw performance of the non-ARM, the x86 platform, which is the Ryzen and the Intel Core models? Let's take a look. This is the flagship AMD Ryzen 9 processor, the 7940HS for laptops. And this one only has eight cores, 16 threads. It has a similar single core score, a little bit higher than the Qualcomm one and a little bit lower multi-core score, but they're about even. And this is the flagship x86 machine. Whereas Qualcomm's X Elite is a brand new design from a brand new process and it's in first generation. So it's doing pretty well. There is also the Ryzen 7945HX, which does have some uh, boosts in terms of performance. For example, uh, here on Nano Review, it does beat out the HS model by a little bit. The difference is here. And if you're doing uh, any kind of uh, machine learning applications, then this, this will really play a big role here. The HS has 8.1 two teraflops for their integrated graphics processor, while the HX only has 0.49. So a huge difference over there. They're targeting different audiences. I think the HX one is for gaming, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, whereas the HS is more uh, for an overall kind of a performance processor. All right, let's jump to Intel, and it is a pretty big jump. Uh, we got a pretty large single core score here, 2941, and the multi-core score is 18,279. This is for the latest Core i9, 14th generation, 14900HX processor with 24 cores in there, 32 threads, that's crazy. Raptor Lake. I just found out reading a book with my kid that Raptor means thief. Hmm. Brand new result today. Wow. 
pretty high end over there. Just to remind you, this is not an ARM processor. This is an x86 processor. We're measuring two different things here. How does Qualcomm compare with the new M3 line? Well, let's take a look at the base M3 scores and we're doing a little bit better here on the single core score. We're at 3084 for the single core score on the M3 line. This is the base model with eight CPU cores and it's pretty good multi-core score too, 11,564. Very close to that multi-core score. Now, of course, if you go with the M3 Pro or the M3 Max, at that point, you have a lot more cores, so the scores are gonna be even higher. So now we have the actual data we can compare about that X Elite chip that's coming out soon. I can't wait to get my hands on it to actually do some tests because this is pretty exciting. This will open up a new generation of ARM-based PCs. and It'll give Apple some real competition, hopefully, and I hope that the software is gonna catch up very soon. People are demanding it. Are you demanding it? Demand it in the comments down below. I will be following up on the Snapdragon stuff, the XLE chip, as well as all the new Apple things that are supposed to be coming out very soon. And if you wanna see the video about the history of this XLE chip, watch this video right over here. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.